Right. This week, the name on the marquee has got to be Yoel Romero in the co-main event, who this past weekend at UFC, uh, excuse me, UFC at Bellator 285 defeated Melvin Manhoof by TKO in the third round with vicious elbows. Mark, what was your impressions of uh, this performance by Yoel Romero getting it done over, over the legend in Melvin Manhoof? I love that we're still having Yoel having marquee days like this one. Uh, I fucking love watching Yoel Romero fight. He just encapsulates so much of what makes fighting something that you can't take your eyes off. Like, he looks like an advanced species of human. He has muscles where they don't even belong. He moves in a way that doesn't make sense for a man of his age. He does things in fights that blow your mind and that you feel like should not look as easy as he makes them look. And he carries that feeling with him of like, this guy might end this if I blink. Like, he feels that yeah. dangerous all, all the time. And when you watch him, he feels like he's, like, impenetrable. So he just, you know, even when he loses, it feels like you're like, well, how could that have just happened? Like, he's, he's Yoel Romero. Like, how did, he, how did he get beat? Like, he's just such a fantastic character in MMA, and you cannot take your eyes off him when he's on your screen. So I love a Yoel fight. I love a Yoel win. I miss him in the UFC, but hopefully we're going to see him in some big fights coming up here soon, which we will get to. Um, <clears throat> but in this particular fight, Yoel really was impenetrable. Uh, Melvin truly just did not have a way. Um, Yoel is too good. He fought smart. He mixed in his wrestling, and then he puts Melvin out in brutal fashion. I mean, there are some angles of that finish that were just scary, like yeah. thudding. Uh, and then he barks like a dog into the camera, <laughs> growls, barks, I don't know what you want to call it, like just long enough Oh, he was barking. that your soul starts to feel uncomfortable, and you're like, when is he <laughs> going to stop? Because it's it's past that point now. But that's yeah. Yoel. And then he tells Johnny yeah. Evelyn that he's coming for his belt. So you can't ask for more than what Yoel gave us on, on Friday night. <laughs> when he barks for like the ninth time, you're like, uh, is, is he okay? Yeah, literally, yeah. You're like, what's is it, going is on? He, is he barking at me? What, like, <laughs> right through the screen? <laughs> it's true. Yeah, he he does just enough to to make you uncomfortable. Yeah, man. He's uh, a scary. Were dude. we? Uh, did Omar take Manhoof? No, no, no. no, no, no. We, we were unanimous in that. The fight yeah, went yeah, yeah. pretty much as I thought it would. Although I thought this was all going to be sort of encapsulated all in the first round and ended in the third round. But yeah, Yoel, he just has too many weapons for Manhoof, who's who's really mainly a striker, whereas Yoel just could go anywhere in the fight and be dangerous everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he. I was happy to see that he leaned on the wrestling. Like, he was winning the stand-up smart. as well, but there was no reason for him to not get the takedowns when he could. It, it was such an advantage there. And uh, actually, I think Omar called it. I believe we all had TKO. I think you said first round, I said second, Omar said third. So I think Omar actually nailed it. Yeah, man. And uh, Manhoof, he walked away on this loss, or didn't KO, he? I should say. On yeah, he walked away. Thing. Hung him up, which, you know, he was one of these guys where uh, it has felt like it might be that time for, for a little while now. He's certainly not in his prime. He could still knock a lot of guys out, of course. He's Melvin Manhoof. Sure. It's not going to go away. Yeah, my God. But uh felt like an appropriate retirement. He was really emotional about it. Um, obviously, it's yeah. tough to retire right after you get knocked out horribly the way that he did but uh you know it seemed like he was content with it had his whole family there his team there had a nice yeah. moment and he gave a nice speech afterward especially for you know you didn't know if his brain was going to be in one piece and he gave a solid little speech forget it yeah 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 i mean i will say this i mean it's probably because of the mileage on their bodies because you know if anybody doesn't know i think we touched on it last week man huff is 46 years old uh, but he's only a year older than Yoel Romero. But that being yeah. said, uh, Romero, interestingly, uh, you know, he entered pro MMA rather late in his life. And he only has 21 bouts on his whole career. Uh, this past weekend was his 21st MMA bout. That is not a lot for a guy of his age. Melvin Manhoof, no. on the other hand, he has 51 matches in professional mixed martial arts. The guy's got a lot of miles on his body. And he looks like a 46-year-old pro MMA fighter to me, whereas Yoel, yeah. I mean, maybe it's partly because he also has gone up in, in, in a weight class and now he's fighting at 205. He just always looks – I mean, he's a freak, man. He's a fucking freak. The yeah. guy looks like he's 30. 
normal rules do not apply to anything that Yoel Romero does. Okay. So, obviously, we don't have to talk about Melvin Manhoff and where he goes from here. He's going into the sunset and into retirement. But uh, what do you think, man? What do you think about uh, Romero's call out? And, and do you think that that's an appropriate next opponent for him? Or do you have something else in mind? I mean, is it truly appropriate for Yoel Romero to walk into a middleweight title shot? in a division that he has never fought in in this organization yet? Probably not. Um, you know, like a guy like Anatoly Tokov, who's been, like, right there waiting for a title shot, is probably like, no, 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 come on. Like, Gegard finally lost. I'm the next guy, and, like, we're going to give it to UL. So, in that way, no. But, like, it's Bellator. It's not the deepest middleweight division in history. Yes, okay, maybe we were going to do a gay guard rematch. I'm not sure what the thought was there, if they were going to immediately run it back between Eblin and gay guard. But if you're not, like, it's pretty easy for Bellator to be like, you know what, we'll give Anatoly Tokov one more fight, and uh, we'll book you well fucking Romero, you know? So yeah. you can't argue it. If you were the promoter, you'd probably do the same exact thing. So, And as a fan, I love the idea. Like, again, again, I, I kind of would love gay guard to get a rematch as well, but if we're not going in that direction... Let's do Yoel Romero, because if Johnny Eblen is really as good as he appeared to be in beating Gegard, then him yeah. and Yoel is going to be one hell of a fucking fight. And Johnny Eblen's wrestling is going to meet resistance like it never has before in the form of Yoel. So we're going mm -hmm. to see him have to fight in a way that he's not used to fighting. You know, he loves to mix it up in there. There might not be a mix-it-up option against Yoel Romero. So there's a lot of interesting angles for that fight. Eblen's already saying he wants to see Yoel take a fight first. So he knows he can make the weight because he doesn't believe he can make it, so on and so on. So mm -hmm. who knows how it's going to play out, but I'm here for it. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I agree. I I think if you're Bellator, it's in Bellator's best interest for them to sort of stay in the headlines. And, and a Yoel Romero in a championship bout uh, does that for them. I mean, he's just such oh. a star, and he's 45 years old. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you also either get Yoel Romero as your champion, which is marketable, or you have Johnny Eblen beat Gegard Mousasi and Yoel Romero back-to-back, -back, and you're like, hello, world, we got this guy Johnny Eblen who's fucking amazing. Yeah. So right. that's really a win-win. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Oof. You got to wonder, do we know how long this guy's going to keep fighting? Is he going to just fight at the top level of organizations into his 50s? I got to think till at least 60. <laughs> <laughs> then he'll hang it up. When he's 60, uh, he's going to look like he's 40. I really don't know, man. I don't – I mean, we haven't seen any physical fall off. He's not slower. He's not weaker. He's not anything. -er. So until I see something, I'm not even thinking about it. Is, is Joe Romero – is he married? Does he have kids? I don't know. That's a good question. If he's just like this single bachelor in his 40s who's still just – all he does – his whole life. He has no wife. He has no family. He has no kids. He has no dogs. He just trains. He is married, it says. Oh. Uh, wait, where is this? It says he prefers to keep his private life private, his personal life private, excuse me. Um, he is currently married, but his, his wife's name is not known. Interesting. Uh, he shares three kids with his wife. He has two sons and one daughter. Not much is known about them since their names have not been publicized either. They live in Miami, Florida. Oh, they live in Miami. Interesting. All right. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, you knew he lived in Miami. He's uh, Jorge's boy. They're, they're together a lot. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 